Hi everyone. This lecture we're going to be focusing on semantics. Let's start with the obvious question. What is semantics? You've probably heard people say something like, you're just arguing semantics, which probably means that you think semantics is something that doesn't really matter, as it's usually put in a way as if you're not really making a contribution to a discussion. The reality is actually the opposite. Semantics is the study of meaning. And if I'm being honest, I would say that meaning is decently important when talking to someone. In this set of lectures, we're going to be going through a broad overview of the different ways that linguistics talks about the meaning of words and sentences. To start with, we're going to talk about how words relate to each other. These relationships are called lexical semantic relations, and there are eight main semantic relations that we will be going through one by one. Before we start, though, I'd like to talk about a central feature of language, ambiguity. Ambiguity is the feature of language that allows single words to mean multiple things depending on different contexts. Ambiguity is present in every language. In English, you can find ambiguity all over the place. Take the word sick, as in, I am sick, or that's sick. Ambiguity can be brought to an extreme degree with the concept of autoantonyms, or words that actually contradict themselves. In this English example, we have words like table, meaning to bring something forth, or to put something on the back burner, ravel, which can mean either to tangle or untangle something, and sanction, which at once means to allow or to punish. Ambiguity is a property that is inherent to language, and it's something that allows language to be creative. The first of the lexical semantic relations we'll be covering is synonymy. Synonymy is when two words have the same, or at least similar, meaning. Synonymy is rarely exact. Words almost always have some difference, but their meanings can be very close. Words like run and rush, or cry and bawl, as in he bawled all night, or even sleep and doze. These are all synonyms because they more or less impart the same meaning. The second relation we'll be looking at is that of antonymy. Antonymy is the opposite of synonymy. It is when two words have opposite meanings. Words like run versus walk, cry versus laugh, sleep versus wake, or yes versus no. Antonymy has three subtypes. There's relational antonyms, gradable antonyms, and absolute antonyms. Relational antonyms are those words which are on opposite sides of a relationship. So a child and his or her parent are said to be on opposite sides of a parent-child relationship. A buyer and a seller are on opposite sides of a sale and could be considered relational antonyms. And then finally, lend and borrow are on opposite sides of the verb to transfer an object, which again allows them to be relational antonyms. One way to think about these words is that one word generally implies the existence of another. A child must have a, at least, biological parent. A buyer must have a seller, or else they're not buying anything. And lending something implies that somebody is borrowing it, otherwise you're not really lending it. The second type of antonyms are gradable antonyms, which exist on a scale. These are things like hot versus cold, tall versus short, or old versus young. These are scales 
with gray area in between. So something can be more hot or more cold, can be almost entirely hot or almost entirely cold, and the absence of one means the presence of another. If someone is not tall, that means they are short. If something is not cold, that means it is hot. And if something is not old, that means that they are young, or at least middle-aged, I guess, in that example. The final type of antonym are absolute antonyms. These are antonyms that do not exist on a spectrum. Words like live versus dead, zombies don't count, true versus false, or yes versus no. There is no gray area in between for the most part. The third type of lexical relation is that of hyponymy. Hyponymy describes the relationship that occurs when one word is the subset, or a part of, another word. You can think of this in the frame, X is a Y relationship. This can be seen in the following words. Dog is a hyponym of animal. We can say a dog is an animal. Atticus is a hyponym of people. We can say Atticus is a person. Purple is a hyponym of color because we can say purple is a color. Hyponymy, to rephrase, is the relationship that occurs when one word is an instantiation of the full set of another word. On the flip side, we have hypernomy as our fourth lexical relation. Hypernomy can be thought of as the opposite, or an antonym, of hyponymy. It describes a word that is a superset of another. So, animal is a hypernym of dog because dogs are a type of animal. Human is a hypernym of Atticus because Atticus is a type of animal. And color is a hypernym of purple because purple is a type of color. Note, be careful because hyponymy and hypernomy differ only by one letter. And so in a test situation, if you accidentally write hyponymy when you mean hypernomy, you will not be given a grade as they're actually opposite situations. Our fifth lexical relation is moronymy, or it's often called partonymy. Moronymy is when one word is an actual physical part of something else. When hyponymy deals with abstract categories, moronymy deals with structural components. So a thumb is a meronym of hand because a thumb is an actual component of a hand. Likewise, a kitchen is a meronym of a home, and pants are a meronym of a suit. Note that in the instance of pants and suit, the pants are not physically connected to the jacket of a suit, and yet we would still say they are a meronym because the suit is not complete without the component of pant. Our sixth lexical relation is that of holonomy. Holonomy is the opposite of meronomy and denotes something that is a whole made up of some part or having something as some component. So we would say that a hand is a holonym for thumb. A house is a holonym of kitchen. And a suit is a holonym of pants. The final two lexical relations that we will be focusing on go together as a set. They are also the two most easily confused terms, so I'll be spending a bit more time on them. 
Both of these terms deal with words that are pronounced the same, but have different meanings. Note that spelling is not important in this distinction. Polysemy is the relationship between two words that sound the same, but have different related meanings. The term wood, which is to say the product of a tree, and wood, an area made of many trees, are polysemous because they do have different meanings, but meanings that are very clearly related. Similarly, book, the object, and book, the verb, to schedule something, are said to be polysemous because the verb is clearly related to the noun, as it comes from the act of writing a date down in a physical book. Crane, the animal, and crane, the construction equipment, are said to be polysemous because the construction equipment is named for how its shape is shared with that of the animal. The last lexical relation is homophony, and is one you're probably familiar with. Homophony is the relationship between two words that sound the same, but are completely unrelated. The best example of this is bank, the financial institution, and bank, the side of a river, which are said to be homophones because they have completely different meanings. And in fact, one comes from the French, that is the financial institution, while bank, the sides of a river, come from a Germanic root. To die, cease living, and to die, changing the colors of something, are homophonous because their meanings are unrelated. Again, one coming from Germanic roots, the other from French roots. And then we have the example of sight, which is a place, and sight, the sense of perceiving something. These are considered homophonous, although some might say they seem like they are polysemous. In fact, once again, one of these words comes from a completely different root than the other. Now, not all homophony is due to etymological differences, etymology being the study of the history of words. Some words were related in the past, but have since diverged in meaning significantly over time. An example of this might be something like break, to wreck something, and break, to stop. We would say these two words are homophonous because they don't seem to be related in meaning. Although, when we look at them, they are derived from the same root. In both cases, there was a single term that meant to apply something with force to another thing. So we would say, when you would smash something with a hammer, you might be breaking it. Over time, this became applied to the carriage and later the automobile, where something was physically applied to stop the wheel from moving. The relationship between these words grew less and less transparent over time, and now we have break meaning to stop and break meaning to destroy. As a result, we would say that synchronically or at this particular time, they are homophonous rather than polysemous. With that, we have covered lexical semantic relations. In the quizzes for this section, you will be expected to look at a set of words and describe the relationship between them. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to shoot me an email or ask in the anonymous form. I think most of these relationships are pretty straightforward, except for polysemy and homophony. But if I need to explain anything slightly better, feel free to ask me and I'll see what I can do. The next video in this section will be covering the relationships between sentences and defining senses of meaning. I'll see you all there.